Guitar and Excel, C major, A minor, seven note scale, as opposed to a five note pentatonic scale we talked about in a prior presentation, starting on fret number seven, fingering. Get ready and some coffee, because I don't like the phrase good luck, you know, because, because I make my own luck, dang it. Unfortunately, I lost the recipe though, so it doesn't always come out good, but but Excel is helping us sound out, write down, and record our recipe mix as we go. So although at times our luck may be a little too salty, it is improving. However, sometimes I feel like I'm moving too slow, wasting my time trying to improve my luck. Time better spent looking for grandma's old luck recipe book. Instead of trying to reinvent the four-leaf clover. But whatever. I'll take the scenic route. It's more interesting that way. As long as you can avoid poisoning yourself. Which, which is more difficult than I originally thought. Man, there's a lot of poisonous stuff out there. But that's, that's why you let the dog lick the spoon before you try it, you know? Anyways, let's get to it. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that... You don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this one, but a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate ourselves. Let's go back to that first tab then to take a look at that overview. We're looking at the C major scale and related modes. We started looking at it in open position, which we defined as frets 0 through 3. Remembering this E represents the low heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. Funnest way to learn the notes in open position is to map out the chords and the scale in open position, which we did, starting with the one chord, C major chord, mapping it out, discussing it in detail. We then went to the four chord because it happens to have a major chord construction, mapped it out, discussed it in detail, then the five chord the same, and then the two chord, which is a minor chord construction, the three chord the same, the six chord the same, and then the diminished chord, the seventh chord. After having done that, if we mapped out all the notes in all the chords in open position, we would be mapping out all the notes in the C major and related mode scales, which would look something uh, like this in uh, the open position. We then wanted to move to the middle of the guitar, starting basically on fret four or five, and think of this not in terms first of chord construction, but in terms first of creating scales that we can then tie into the chords that we learned in open position. So we looked at this position and then we zeroed in on particular notes from the scale, each note within the scale in that position. Then we did a similar process moving up to the second, the next position. I would call the first one we looked at position one or a G-shaped position. We then moved to what I would call position two or an E-shaped position. We discussed it in detail and how we can basically tie into each of the notes within it to what we learned about in open position and the fifth fret. And now we're moving to the next position, and this is where we are working at this point in time, our focus on fret uh, number nine here. So let's give a quick recap of our color schemes as we go through this position. So we have, this is our fretboard. Once again, this E represents the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling. The green notes represent the pentatonic five out of the seven notes which we talked about in a prior presentation you can see those up top and now we've added the two notes that make up the full uh, major scale and related modes those are the ones in blue so i would think of it as though we first lay down all the notes in blue meaning all seven notes are underneath on the bottom and then we put on top of that the pentatonic notes, which are picking five notes out of the seven note scales. And those are going to be the green notes that are on top, the green notes then fitting inside of the blue notes. As we talked about in a prior presentation, when we look at the five note pentatonic scale, then it only works perfectly if you think about it as related to the modes of the major scale or Ionian and then the related minor or the Aeolian modes 
And that's because with all the other modes that we take a look at, these two notes become vitally important because they're going to be part of oftentimes the major or minor chord construction, which is going to be a key uh, note within it. So our mindset then, a lot of people really like learning the pentatonic because it's so flexible. And then if they're playing a different mode, you might add like the missing note so that you build and your, your root thinking is really pentatonic scale. But I tend to like looking at the full major scale. And if we learn the full major scale uh, this way, then we're also learning something that we can fit into all the different modes because basically we can then focus in on these different notes and look at those different uh, modes. So we'll talk about that uh, shortly here. Those are the color schemes. And then we have the open position that we started looking at. Uh, and then we're, we went to position number one. I call it position number one because it's generally the position most people start learning from just a pentatonic shape, for example. So I had to open it up a little bit there, but we have, and you can also call it a G shape because you can see this G basically shape fit into it. Remember, we're talking about a C major scale and the related modes. If I tried to build a C major, you've got your C here. That's going to be the shape that you can kind of construct. And you can see that looks like a G shape if it was to be played in uh, the open position. So if we pull out the trusty guitar, we've got our, our G shape here. If I move that up to here, then you can see those notes are within it. These notes I would have to basically bar off, which is difficult to do as a bar chord, but we can still use that G shape to kind of build our chords. So then we can move up. We can see the overlap between uh, position one and two. And you can also call this then a uh, E shaped position, because again, if I look at that C right there and I build my chord from there you get something that looks like uh, an E shape which if it was an E major it would be back here if we're up here uh, we get that E shape so you could name it that remembering now that we've added these two other notes however that this these shapes will fit in multiple uh, scale shapes within a five fret interval because we have seven notes but when we only had five notes the pentatonic these shapes would be unique to the five note pentatonic these shapes only having three notes within them because we're talking about chords which have three notes so we have the three note chords we can use to then name the five note pentatonic which will fit uniquely into one of the five positions and then can also use to name the seven note major scale around it being careful however then because these shapes could fit in more than just one position on the fretboard okay and so then and then so then we're moving up to the next shape which i would call uh position number three which is going to be our uh point of focus at this point which you could call the d position because if i look at that c right here i also have a c down here and the shape that we would be making would be a d it's basically a, a d uh uh, uh, type of shape, which would we'll, we'll hold on, it would look like that. And you can see this position, most people kind of recognize it up top here with these uh, shapes, if we were looking at it in terms of a C major as opposed to the relative modes. But I'd have to kind of lean back and pick up that C right there, which makes it difficult to hit that one. So that's going to be basically uh, the shape that we are focused on at this point in time. And we just added these blue notes. So that's where we're at. So now we're going to be looking at just the fingering of it. Last time we looked at the fingering in terms of a pentatonic shape, we're just going to be adding this added, this added two notes. Now, note the difference between this and a pentatonic shape. Now you have those half steps. You'll recall that if you just look at the green notes, we've removed basically the half steps. And so now we have brought them back in. That's nice because the half steps, although they can kind of mess you up when you're switching around, uh, they, they also can add a lot of flavor because that half step gives you the lead in oftentimes in a, in a major scale. And they can also cause more dissonance, which is the thing that causes problems, but is also the thing that gives a lot of music more flavor. You want to know where those kind of uh, those items are, because all of the music you're trying to make is trying to create tension and then resolve the tension uh, generally in, in interesting ways. 
Also, now since we have the full scale, remember that we're not only just learning the C major scale, we're really learning, if you learn the shapes, all of the different modes, which is the great thing about learning the major scale because you don't have to kind of think about a five note scale and then add what you need to add if you want to be thinking about a different mode. You could just say, I'm just going to learn this, this whole shape. And then if I start on any different note, starting and stopping on the different note, if I play around that note, in other words, I can make it the tonic. So you're really learning at least uh, six, if not seven, because the, the, the Locrian is not a mode that people typically play all the time. But if you, if you learn the scale, you can kind of think about playing it in basically six different ways, which would be basically like six different scales, which you might think, well, it's all basically the same thing, but it's, it's really not because like, like if it really sounds a whole lot differently if you're playing around the D as opposed to uh, playing around the C. And it does take time to try to switch your mind from saying, okay, I'm using the C as the tonic, and then I'm gonna play the same notes, but make the D the tonic, or the E the tonic, or the F the tonic, the central point. Uh, but it's a lot easier to do that once you know the shape and you kind of keep your mind in sync on what you're doing. Also remember that once we learn all of these uh, notes and chords and related modes in this particular position, you can move this whole shape somewhere else noting where that C is, right? So if I move that whole shape over here, making the C the A, right, on that, on that string, and I move the whole relative position there, then I can, I can play the same relative position. I might not even know what I'm playing, but I, I can know that I'm playing around something where the A would be like an A major kind of uh, thing, and I can play the same thing. That's the beauty of the guitar. It's symmetrical, uh, in that way. But we want to keep our mind kind of focused on what we're doing. So the fingering is something I would practice like in the evening oftentimes. But even when you're practicing in the evening, when your mind is like not really fully working, it's useful. You, you want to just like not just go through the scale like this, starting on a D. And you don't and you don't really know what you're playing. That gives you some some benefit but you'll be playing in like a, a D Dorian. And if you don't really know that because you're starting and stopping like on a D, then that's going to be, you're not doing as much as you could even in like a nice brain dead, like evening session of just fingering, right? So you want to be saying, where am I starting? Am I starting on a C? Am I starting on a D? And then, and then start and stop on that note. Now, if I want to play in a C, note that this C is in the prior shape, but that's a great starting point because then you could start from the C there or you could start in the C like in the middle here. There's your, your uh, octave. So we can say, all right, I'm going to first start it back here so I could say I'm on a C. I'm going to start it on the C major and I'm going to slide into my shape and it might help to actually count out as well. So I can say there's my C and then I'm moving in. So I'm going from this C here and then I'm gonna kind of stop at this C. And if you can count, again, that makes it a little bit more difficult. It's, that'll give you another element when you're learning this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I should be able to hear it kind of resolve in my mind to there, right? And then we can go, of course, back. So we could say, all right, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. To give it a little bit more emphasis, you might also put the uh, chord on what you're playing so this or at least the power chord so you say now I'm playing in the key of C there's my my C which is an E shaped uh, C chord and I go one two three four five six seven eight and now I can play my D shaped C right there and then of course I can keep on going up and I'm going to keep that focus of the C on the shape so I'm going to say, then I'm going to go C. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, so once I get to uh, the eight there, where am I? I'm not on that C. I should be on this C over here. Sorry about that. <laughs> then I could play this little D right there. D shape. It's a D shaped C. 
and then I can go one, two, three, four. That brings me up to this F, and then back four, three, two, four, three, two, one. Play that little shape right there, and then I'm going from this C back down. So I could call this C the one, or I might call it the eight, which is a little bit easier when I'm counting down. So I'd say it's gonna be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then I'll play my shape again, which is gonna be built off of the C. It's this one, this one, and this one, the C, the G, and uh, the E. Notice I altered my fingering a little bit so that I ended off on my pointer so that I can then play my uh, shape here. So you're gonna have to play around with what you think the best fingering is as you work through the shape. And then of course we can bring this one back to here. So once again, I'm gonna say that's an eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. That's the last one in the shape. And I would go back to the prior shape, sliding into it. And there's gonna be my E uh, there. So, so, Obviously, once you get that shape down, you can work on your speed and so on and your and your tempo within it. And if as long as you're playing it and you know where you're starting and stopping, then you can start playing around certain areas like each of the notes uh, within the scale, which we'll talk about doing more in future presentations. But just doing the fingering would be great. But again, just it's a lot better if you do the fingering and don't just think about this shape and this position but this shape and what's the what's the what your tonic that you're focusing in on within that shape and that'll give you that'll i think it'll go a lot further i mean i i, I didn't do that when i was starting and i think it would be way better if i did i'm going to move this one out a little bit so we can look at this shape a little bit more easily now once you do that you can then think about this the next all of the modes which we'll talk about more later but Notice this this whole seven notes lends itself to do the same thing on the modes. So if I was to say, I'm gonna think about this uh, as the minor mode here, let's make this a little smaller and go do do. And so then I can make it even a little smaller. I think it's still seeable. Okay, so now I can say, well, now let's play around. This is the the related minor. So that would be like making the six the one. So now I could say, okay, let's jump. I'm jumping to the A because that's the next most common uh, uh, scale. So I could say, all right, well, if that's the C, I can say A and, and be playing around basically the A minor here. So I can think about it as the six, or I can think about it as the one of the, of the related A minor scale. And I can play that same thing and just start from here now as basically, you know, my tonic. And I can play it, it as the six or as the one. So if I wanna play around the six, then I could start and stop on the six. So I could say, well, that's like saying, it's the six of the C, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, so now I'm back to the, to the six here, or I can do that in terms of making it the one for the related mode, which is the Aeolian or A minor mode, making it the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I'm back to that one again. Now again, you might wanna make your chords within here. So if I built my chord construction, this would be an, like an A minor uh, 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 chord, or you might call this a, a C-shaped A minor chord. We'll talk about how to build that later, but you know, you can play that and then play it out. Six, seven, eight, one. Whoops, wait, hold on. Six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five, six. And then when you're down here, you could say, okay, how can I build my chord there? We could build it like this way. It's one way you can build the, the minor chord down there. We'll talk about that more later once we focus on each of the notes uh, within it. And then we can keep going up and say this six, seven, eight, one, two, three. So now I've gotten to that F, that's as far as I can go, so I can go back down. So three, two, one, eight, seven, six. And I can play like a minor. And then we can go back down from there. So we can go uh, six, five, four, three, two, one, or eight, seven, six. And then we can play our minor here. 
So we can play through that same shape uh, with, with each of these. If I went to the next one down, the D, the Dorian, we could do the same thing. So let's hide this out to the Dorian. So I'm going to say hide. And so now I'm making the D my central point, and we'll focus more on, we'll do this more uh, later. But just to get your idea, just when you're fingering this one scale, you could start just fingering it in different ways so that you can get a different sound in your mind. And you can really easily play, like I say, six different scales, uh, seven if you include the Locrian that's not quite common to play in. So, right, and then I can make the D, I could play around the two, or if I want to call it the Dorian, I'm just going to reorientate everything to call it the one. So, right, so I could say if that's, if that's where my starting point is, if it's the two, I can go from two to two. So our octave is up here. So if we count that out, we could say two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two. There's our octave. We can convert the two to the one, making it the Dorian. So then I can just count it out as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one. There's the octave. We know that the two and the Dorian starts off with a minor. It's a minor mode. So we could make a minor scale like that and then play through it. There it is, boom. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two. Then we can construct a minor like this or like that and so on. We could do the same thing if we kept on moving through. We'll focus more on this in, in future presentations. But obviously if we moved to the E, then all we're doing is saying, okay, now I'm gonna play the same things but look at that as my center, which is basically playing in the Phrygian. So now we're going to be like, okay, so now I'm in essence playing in the Phrygian. I'm going to say there's the E. We know that the Phrygian is a minor mode because it has a little um, a lower case here. So it's a minor mode construction. So I can see it as either playing from the three to the three of the related C major or make the three the one in which case we would be playing in the Phrygian, basically the same thing, right? So you can play the same notes here, but now I'm just saying, all right, I'm gonna start right there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three. So there's the octave. And then if we make it the one, we could do the same thing here. We could say this is gonna be the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's the octave and of course if we make the three into a chord it's going to be another minor mode the Phrygian is going to have the minor more mode so we could build it uh, this way which is like a G minor shaped E and so you can play the, the the chord and then go through it so this is going to be da, da, da. and then I can call it one two three four five six seven eight and then da, da, da. So we'll do more of that later. And then, of course, we can keep going with this. We could say, okay, what if I made the F then the starting point? Well, then then what would we be doing if I hide this out in terms of modes? We would be playing the Lydian. So I'll hide this and go back on over. So now we'll play the same scale. But now the F is the central point. So we're going from here to here and I'm just playing the top bit. We'll talk more about these modes and how we can look at and focus on each of these later. And we'll talk about modes in particular in more detail later. But for right now, we're gonna say, okay, the F, I'm gonna play around the F, which is this note as basically the one. I'm just gonna play the same scale and be thinking about it as the one or playing around the four. So I can start from here and say, okay, now I'm gonna practice this same scale, but there's the, the in essence, one, well, let's start with the four that I'm playing around. Four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four. There's my octave. Sometimes the, the, the playing around the four can be a little bit difficult to make it sound like the center, but it is doable. If I convert it to the one, I could say, okay, so if I make that the one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, the octave. And we know that this, the four, is a, a major chord construction. Therefore, we know that the Lydian is going to be a major mode, right? So I can build a major scale from that, which would look something like this, which is a G-shaped scale.
scale, and then you can play up from there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one. And so then if I do the same thing and we go, okay, let's do this next one and go down to the G. So the G is going to be, if that's the Lydian, the next one is the Mixolydian, right? So we're going to hide that. So now we're on the Mixolydian. But if you don't know the mode, you can just say, well, now I'm just going to be playing around the G, making it, in essence, the one. So the G is going to be right there. And then we have another G right there. And notice I'm only playing this piece of it. You can go up and up and down, making sure you get the whole shape in there, just starting and stopping on that G. So if I was on this G, for example, I'm, I could go back right to, to that G. And then play like my, my chord right there. And then I can go up from here. So if I start on that, and if I think of it as the fifth, and I'm playing around the fifth, it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I started on, <laughs> there's the mode. That was if it was a one. If I started as at the fifth, it would be five, six, seven, eight, or one, two, three, four, five. There's the octave. If I started as the fifth, if I started as the first, we can say this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one. And there's the octave. We know that this is a major uh, mode because it's constructed or the one note is a, a major scale. So I can say, okay, there's my A shaped major. And then I can build it. I could start that out and build the starting and stopping by building a chord on it. And then finally, we have the Locrian, which I won't spend a lot of time on because this is the one. Uh, notice that playing around the four is a little bit difficult, but playing around the seven, making it the tonic is very difficult, right? That's not normally what people uh, musically do, but technically you could start at the B and play around it. So I'm gonna hide this. And so we can say Lokian, hide. Probably not something that you're gonna just play around as though it's the one, then, but it's, oft, it's often useful to see, you know, the chord shape there because the, the chord shape that creates that tension in the diminished chord is important because it, re, it, it resolves back to the one. But you're probably not going to be practicing your scale so much, making the B the central, the, the central point. So I won't even go through it right now. But we'll, in future points, but you could, you could practice that. But in the future, what, we, what we're going to do is talk more in detail about focus in, in on each of these notes and as you can see if you do that then you basically can play you know six different scales in that one position which you can then move that entire position anywhere else as long as you orientate around the C because you usually orientate around the major and you can play any of the major and related modes in basically any position by shifting this entire shape uh, in that way, which we'll talk more about when we get to, we'll, we'll talk about learning this whole thing in different scales, like the G, which is another common one to do. But obviously, you you can start moving that around if you if you want. But the what I the important thing to me is that, and what I didn't really know at the beginning is that when you learn these shapes, then you it, it's you get so much more out of it if you're focusing in on the starting and stopping point of not just the top and the bottom of the shape, not the D going to the F, but the D going to the D and just keep on playing around the shape until you get back to whatever, whatever scale that you're thinking of your mind in. And that, and that's easy to do once you have, once you have that down on the theory side, then in the evenings you, or, you know, while you're watching TV, you could play through the scale and get so much more out of it by, by, by just realizing that you're playing around a particular note. All right. So anyways, we'll get into uh, this shape in more detail, focusing in on each of these chords and each of these notes and how we can link it to uh, the prior shapes in future presentations.